Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Marks and I'm the Director of Education here at Sunray. We help thousands of general contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers secure their lien and bond claim rights. Sunray secures over $10 billion annually. Today's webinar is conducted by the incredible William Porter, a California construction lien law guru. Today's webinar's topic is statutory construction releases. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the fabulous William Porter. Huh. Thank you so much, Rachel. I, I, I don't know if I've ever had an introduction so nice as that. I don't know if I can, uh, you know, uh, meet the uh, description, but let's do our best. We're going to go about 20 minutes today. Uh, if you have questions, um, uh, what you, you're going to do is go to the webinar chat box, which you see on the right of your screen, and then we'll answer questions at the end. But please don't include any of your company names uh, in the questions so that, uh, you know, they're, they're more or less anonymous. Uh, moving on to the next slide. I got a little di legal disclaimer here. So I'm not trying to dispense legal advice. If any of you need any specific legal advice, you can give me a call at my office in Sacramento or email me. Uh, I'm, I email at bporter at porterlaw.com. That's bporter at porterlaw.com. And just say you're at the seminar and I'll just kind of consider it an extension. Okay. Uh, anyway, moving on. So this is a little bit about me. Uh, a lot of different things. I've been an attorney for more than 30 years. I've drafted some of the laws or revised them anyway that we're going to be discussing today and, and some of the other statutes. And I, I teach this in, in other similar classes in a longer format, as well as practicing law and as well as being an arbitrator and a mediator and uh, running our law firm. So uh, th that's me. And you can go to Porter Law Group, our, our website. It's just porterlaw.com. We're going to be discussing today um, some construction release forms that that um, there's four of them that you would use or you would be asked to use and often um, contractors are usually more so subcontractors and suppliers are asked to use these forms and they're often asked to use the wrong one and these forms have really um, a detrimental sometimes legal consequences so you need to know which of the four forms is right for you to use on a construction process, uh, project when you are asked to uh, release your claim. So we're going to go over the forms. I'm going to describe which ones you're required to use. Okay, now generally, and on this page here, there's four types of release forms used in connection with California construction. And the circumstance will tell you which one to use. Two of the forms are conditional releases, and two of the forms are unconditional re releases. Of these, two are for progress payments and two are for final payments. The main distinction I want to make to you uh, uh, initially, because it's often misunderstood, is that the conditional release means you're going to get a check or you just got a check, but it has not cleared the bank. So the condition to you releasing your claims is that the check clears the bank. So you say, yes, I will release my claims essentially as long as the check clears. Those are the conditional releases. The other ones are the unconditional releases. And two are for progress, you know, the, the, they're for progress payments or the final payment, each of them. But the unconditional releases, what that means is, is yes, I am releasing my claims to um, a right to a mechanics lien, stop notice, payment bond claim, those types of special remedies, uh, because if, to, to the extent of the amount that you paid me because the check has cleared the bank. Therefore, my release is unconditional because the check has in fact cleared the bank. Now, uh, specifically the forms are described in California Civil Code sections 8132 to 8138. And you can look these up on the page there at the bottom left, you see the website to look it up, but pretty much you could probably Google California Civil Code 8132 and you could find these things. So I would like to point out this because people often violate this and it's uh, quoted on this page. Each of the statutes that, that you would look at about these four releases contains the following language and it's this, the waiver and release shall be null, void and unenforceable unless it is in substantially the following form. And what this means is that the language in these statutes has to be followed pretty much verbatim in your releases, 
I know that contractors try to add things into these releases, like uh, things that you may find usually in an indemnity clause and not in these releases. So to the extent that occurs, it would make the release null, void, and unenforceable. And so keep your eye out for that. And what you say to the contractor, owner, or sub, whoever gives these one of these to you, is that you say, hey, civil code says you can't change these things around. You have to use the language in the civil code, nothing more, nothing less. So then you can either choose, okay, I'm going to sign it, but uh, Mr. Contractor, let's say, it's not valid, you know? So if you think you're doing something here, uh, I'm signing this thing and you can pay me and all, but I just wanted you to know the release is not valid. And, and then pretty much they get in line because they like releases to be valid. All right, and then they quit playing games. I, you know, the playing of games in these things is just, just improper entirely. Okay, uh, then in addition as to the two unconditional releases, the following language appears, which I've quoted on this page, um, uh, with the text uh, of the notice to claim it in at least as large a type as, as uh, otherwise on the form, okay? So this means that none of the releases are valid unless they follow the rules, uh, don't try to hide things, have the language not in small print and just be heads up and, and on a, a open book type of basis on these four forms, not playing games. Just basically, oh, and by the way, if you wanna look at the forms, the ones we have here, you can, you can access them on our website, porterlaw.com, and you can in fact fill them in on screen and just print them out and then sign them. So it's really easy to do and they're all free. So next slide. All right, uh, here's a basic description of the use uh, of when to use each of the four release forms. If it's a progress payment promised, but the check hasn't cleared the bank, um, then you would use uh, the, the form called conditional waiver and release on progress payment. And then after the check clears, you can then, if you want, use the unconditional waiver and release on progress payment. And you can find that in civil code 8132. All right, then if a progress payment has been paid in full and the check has cleared a bank, the bank, then you'll use the unconditional waiver and release on progress payment, which you can read about in civil code section 8134. Those are the ones for conditional. Now we're going to talk about the two final payment releases, which we'll go over in a moment as well. Okay, you're going to use the form that's called a conditional waiver and release on final payment if full payment has been promised in writing in exchange for the release, or you received a check, but the check hasn't yet cleared the bank, and you don't know if it's going to clear the bank. And I should I should also mention that. Um, checks that are sent, of course, uh, they can be stopped payment on. Uh, and um, even if you deposit it and you think it's cleared the bank, if someone who wrote the check says, calls the bank and says, oh, that was fraudulent, they can reverse it and have it come back out. All right. That's an important thing to know. So sometimes uh, you have to check with your bank if they'll tell you and ask them, has the check irrevocably cleared the bank? Uh, so that's important. Also, even people say, oh, all wire transfers. Did you know that wire transfers can also be reversed within a certain amount of time if someone usually says fraud? And the claim of fraud, of course, can be fraudulent, but it's not going to matter to the bank. They will reverse the thing uh, usually if someone says that it's fraudulent unless too much time has passed. So you got to check with the, your bank on that policy. Just something to note. Okay, then uh, the final one is if, if you have been paid in full and the check has cleared the bank, then you're going to want to use an unconditional waiver and release on final payment. Okay, uh, and, and whether the uh, other party chooses to use these is, is up to them. I wouldn't rush to do it unless you're asked to do it. Okay, um, and then we're going to go over the forms now. Then that's Civil Code Section 8138. Okay, here is a conditional waiver and release on progress payment uh, form. This is conditional on progress. Okay, as you can see on, on, on the form, and, and my apologies that it looks like it's in two parts, but it just didn't fit on the page and I didn't want it too small so you couldn't read it. So let's go over, it's gonna look just like this and they shouldn't add things other than this because this is the language of the statute, right? All right, so you'll see 
the name of the claimant, it's going to be you, the, the potential claimant. The name of the customer, that's who you're working for. The job location, describe it, usually an address, who the owner is, and uh, that may be, be a, you know, a corporation, LLC, whatever it may be. And then the through date. The through date is important because it means that you are giving up all your claims for all work and materials supplied through that date. Okay, and then, then this is the language, and it says it waves, and you can read this yourself, but it waves all the claims um, uh, conditionally for everything that you've delivered, all the work you've done to that date. Then you're going to write down here who's the who's the check coming from, the amount of the check. So see, the amount that you're going to receive here is in exchange for um, the uh, um, the the uh, work and materials performed through the through date. Okay, so it'll be this amount, all claims released to that date and then who the check is gonna be payable to. There's some exceptions down here and it doesn't cover uh, retentions. So you don't have to put that into the amount or the check if there are retentions. And then extras for which the claimant hasn't received payment. These may be things like, let's say um, a disputed change orders which have not yet been processed, things of that nature. And then uh, here, the third one is um, the following progress payments for which the claimant has previously given a conditional waiver and release but has not received payment. What this is about, it's an in recognition that maybe the month before you sent another conditional waiver and release on progress payment. Let's say for 20 grand, just for example. And this month, it's gonna be 30 grand. So what would you do for this month? Because you release all claims to this date here. So would it be 30 grand for this pay period or 20 grand plus 30 grand, 50 grand? Well, what this does is it recognizes the, the prior month. Okay, where you, you haven't received the check yet. So if you add this amount and this amount down here, it's gonna be the full amount that you're owed, excluding retention. And then finally, note that these releases, none of them release contract rights. So in the event you mess up on this conditional release, it mostly affects mechanics lien rights, stop payment notice rights, and bond claim rights, but it doesn't affect your contract rights. Although someone could, use this as evidence of your intent, but it doesn't mean you waive your right to sue for breach of contract in case you make a mistake on this form. Okay, I spent a little bit more time on that form than um, uh, perhaps some of the uh, other forms because they're somewhat repetitive. And remember, this is the conditional waiver and release on progress payment, and it is gonna be exchange, in exchange for a check um, that will be coming or has come. The main feature being that you don't know if the check has cleared the bank yet. Okay, the next one, the next form is an unconditional waiver and release on progress payment. Basically, it's the same information that you fill in right here as you did on the previous one. And then uh, the same language here, so or similar language, and then the dollar amount. And it says that you unconditionally waive your claims for work and materials that you supplied through the date that you list here for um, this dollar amount here. And it excludes things like retentions and extras and the things that we discussed before. So if you're taking out 10%, that isn't effect, affected by this because that'll be at the very end. So remember, this is un unconditional and it's on a progress payment. Let's say the progress payments I didn't mention, it's those periodic payments on many contracts, usually larger contracts that are gonna happen maybe on a monthly basis or based on, on um, uh, achieving certain uh, benchmarks as you proceed in a contract and like let's say when you have the foundation you'll send one and when you have the walls up you'll send one when you have the roof on you'll send one or maybe you do it on a monthly basis whatever the contract requires of you okay anyway this is those are the two that are for progress payments then when you get all the way to the end of the job uh, then you're going to get into the the uh, conditional waiver and release on final payment because the job is done you're going to be getting your final payment so this one is conditional and of course, that means that you're going to get a check or um, you have a check which they sent to you, but it has not yet cleared the bank. So then you fill out the information much as before, your name here, the name of the customer, the job location and who the owner is. And then this release language, then the maker of the check, um, the uh, amount of the check and who the check is payable to. OK, this should include all your retention in my view. So it will be um, 
it doesn't say releasing it to a certain date because it's the final payment. The maker of the check who you get it to, the amount and who it's payable to. There are some, whoops, there are some exceptions here. Uh, let me go back one more. Okay, uh, I think we're on this one. There's an exception you can put down here at the bottom for disputed claims for extras in the amount of, of blank. And what that is all about is that you can release all your claims in exchange for that payment. But let's say you have some disputed issues. That's where you would put it in. So for example, you might write something there like um, disputed change order in the amount of $6,532. That means you would release everything on the entire job as long as the check clears, because remember it's conditional as noted up here in exchange for the check in that amount. But this issue down here is not resolved. So you can still do whatever you want on that. You can do a mechanics lien, a stop notice or stop payment notice, uh, a bond claim if there's a bond on the project and, and you reserve that right and are gonna determine it later. And then of course, you know, here as with the other ones, you would sign in the dated signature and you send it along. Uh, let me mention it's, it's for all of them, it's not required in the, in the statute that these have to be notarized, by the way. Uh, if someone was going to ask about that. Uh, there's nothing in the statute that says that. Now, I will say this. There are some things on which you want to just cooperate with the other side. Okay, I guess if someone said notarize this, it, and, and for me, it's not that difficult. And for many, I mean, you should really have someone in your office who is is a notary, because it's easy for someone to get their, their notary license. And, you know, we have two people um, uh, in the offices next to me right here that are notaries as well as their other responsibilities and they're handy to have but if someone says that okay you tell them ah it's not required by law but i guess if you want to get paid go along with the game okay uh, next one here is the unconditional waiver and release on final payment and this means that the check has cleared the bank so you fill this out as before um you can have an exception here for uh disputed claims in the amount of uh, here, I'm not sure why it's, th this is, uh, and Rachel, you may want to, in the next version of this, this is repeated here, let's just take that out, uh, it won't be twice, but anyway, it'll be once, dispute the claims for extras in the amount of, and then you sign it, so this is basically saying, okay, I got everything, the check has cleared, it's unconditional, it's final, the only remaining issue is what we listed down here, it's just the remaining issue that we still have to resolve, and then you set about trying to resolve it, Okay, um, let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, 13, let's see. Uh, are there any questions? Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna let Rachel jump in. Rachel, are you there? I'm here and I just wanna say thank you so much, Bill, for your time today and educating us on this um, very important topic of types of construction uh, release forms and explaining when to use each of them. I think that it was uh, wonderful how you provided a visual for each of these like statutory waiver and release forms so that everyone can see what exactly these forms actually look like. Um, you know, you can sit here and talk about it all day, but it's nice to also like, put um, you know, a visual to that. So thank you so much. You really provided us with super helpful and extremely valuable information today. Um, right now, I do not see any questions that have come through. However, if anyone here does think of a question, even after the webinar, please, please feel free to reach out to myself or Bill, and we will make sure to answer any questions you may have. Um, if you'll just do me a favor and go to the next slide, Bill. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, if you guys would like to take a moment to review us on Google, we would appreciate that. And then if you go to the next slide. And then let me reiterate, if anybody needs a little bit of um, uh, additional information, don't hesitate to call me or, or to uh, email me, and we will just consider it an extension of the seminar if you do it within the next week or so. Okay. Perfect. That's so awesome. Thank you, Bill. I want to go over the next two upcoming webinars we have with Bill so that you guys can mark these down and you can register online at sunraynotice.com slash education. So the next one we have will be on Thursday, July 13th from 1 o'clock to 1.20, and that is getting paid faster with liens, bonds, and contracts. And then the next one will be on Thursday, September 28th from 1 to 1.20. 
one to 120, excuse me, and that title is what happens after I record my lien? How do I get paid? So make sure you guys sign up for those, or um, as always, you if you aren't able to make the live webinar, you can always go back onto our website and um, filter it out so that you can pull up the webinar that Bill did. So if you'll go to the next page for me, that's all we have today, guys. I really appreciate everyone joining us today, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you on your next um, on our next webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Rachel, and uh, uh, I'm glad I was able to present for you today, and I hope it was valuable to all those attending. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.